Well, good morning. Welcome to day number 48 on this trip. I'm not quite sure, but we're getting close to the end. We're getting close. Last night I slept here in my hotel. Probably the best hotel that I've stayed in yet on this trip. And it was a double night of motels, two nights in a row. I wonder what that means. Am I getting old? Do I appreciate the comforts of motels? This actually isn't a motel. This is a hotel. It's a proper hotel. It's a big one. It was big and it was expensive and I spent the night here and I'm taking advantage of that getting my money's worth because it's almost 10 o'clock. Now I'm gonna pack up my motorcycle and we're gonna go for a ride. And once again, we're gonna make this up as we go along because we don't know where we're going or what we'll see or where we'll spend the night. But if you stick with me, you'll learn all of these things and more, I promise. Why there's so many things in this room that I haven't seen for so long, like electricity, running water, there's a telephone here, microwave, a refrigerator. None of these things are things that I've been used to living on the road, camping in the bush. It's four walls and a ceiling, and there's art on the walls. I can look at art now instead of the beauty of nature that I'm used to. There's real chairs to sit in. I don't have to unfold my little camping chair, but I have a, a proper chair, not just one of them, but three of them and towels. Oh my gosh, I haven't even had a towel on this whole trip. The showers that I've taken in campgrounds and rivers, why, I would just have to stand in the air dripping wet until I was dry enough to put my clothes back on. But now I have proper clean white towels. And this thing, my goodness, what is this? And there's drawers that slide and work in effortless perfection. Unlike the janky metal boxes on the side of my motorcycle that I can barely close anymore, they don't keep anything like rain out or insects. They just kind of keep my stuff inside as it bounces along and gets tarnished going down the road. And coffee makers. I haven't seen a coffee maker like this in a long time. I'm used to my little AeroPress that I use every morning when I make my coffee, but I didn't use this one because I went to the restaurant and they gave me all the coffee that I needed and then some. And Wi-Fi? Why do you need Wi-Fi? I don't know. I've been living without Wi-Fi for over a month, but I have it here and I guess I found it useful for a few minutes before I fell asleep on this bed. A bed. Now that's a real concept. It's not a stinky old inflatable air mattress that gets sticky underneath you when you sleep on a hot summer night but it seems to be a high quality mattress with fine linens and big pillows. I have six pillows. I don't even have a pillow that I camp with. I put my down jacket in a little fleece lined bag and that's my pillow. Now I have six of them. A telephone with a landline connection that means it'll never be without service. Unlike on my travels, I don't have any bars on my cell phone because I'm out in the middle of nowhere and I can't call anybody. I just talk to myself, or I talk to you guys mostly. And a smoke alarm. I haven't seen one of these in ages. What good would this do me if I'm camping out in the bush? It would just be going off all the time. Because every time I make a fire, it smokes. Sometimes it smokes a lot. That's why all my clothing smells like campfire. Some people pay a lot of money for that. For me, it's just natural. And then chargers. The thing that perhaps I appreciate the most, charging camera batteries and wireless mic batteries and GoPro batteries and drone batteries and iPhone batteries. Oh my God, I have a lot of batteries. And then there's this thing over here sitting next to my bed with these red numbers. I almost forget what this thing even is because I've completely lost track of time. I've become like a wild animal living with the rhythm of nature, rising with the sun and sleeping with the moon as my only companions in the forest as I travel through the mountains, unaware of time other than the natural rhythms provided by nature. And then there's this. What possible use would I have with this? Except that I think it would make some pretty good fire starter. Maybe I should take that with me. Climate control. It's been so long since I've had climate control like this, I kind of used to climate control being my jacket or my shorts. If I'm hot, I put on my shorts. If it's cold, I put on my jacket. 
That's climate control. And here's a real proper civilized way of hanging my clothing, my jacket and my helmet. Unlike when I live in the forest or the desert, I just have to throw it on my motorcycle and let it sit there overnight, exposed to the weather and the insects and the animals and not knowing what will be inside when I put it on in the morning. And here's a map with an emergency evacuation diagram. I didn't even know that I needed one of those. When I'm camping out in the mountains, my emergency evacuation plan is point my motorcycle in the right direction so that if a bear comes and I need to get the hell out of there, I can get on the bike really quickly and give it the gas and go. But now I have this. And then there's this, this roll of toilet paper that looks so clean and organized hanging here on the shelf. And not just one, but two, there's a spare in the background. And I have about a quarter of a roll of toilet paper left in my bathroom bag and it's compressed and mangled beyond belief, but it still works. And I use it sometimes, except most of the times I'll use leaves or things that I find in nature. I do carry a bottle of soap with me, which I use to clean my dishes or wash my hair or my body, but it ran out. It ran out a week ago. So I've been soapless, but that's okay because now I have not just soap, but shampoo and conditioner and makeup remover. What can I use that for? And there's my empty glass of beer that I had from last night. They told me just to set it outside the door and the housekeeping would come and get it in the morning. I don't even know what to make of that. Housekeeping? In the forest, I'm my own housekeeper. It's up to me to keep my own house and clean up my own dishes and put them away where they belong when I'm done. I don't have another person that follows me around and picks up after me after I drink beer at the end of the day. And I wonder why. Why would anybody give up this palace of infinite splendor, this opportunity to live a civilized, meaningful existence of pleasure and creature comforts and trade that all in for a life of vagabond motorcycling, getting dirty every day, dirty and tired and hungry and sometimes cold and wet and miserable. Why would anybody leave this behind? I'm up here on a hilltop overlooking the Snake River, and the confluence of the Snake River and the Clearwater River. And down below me is the town of Lewiston, Idaho, and across the way is the town of Clarkston in Washington. And I came up to this hill overlooking these rivers for a very specific reason, not to tell you about the pulp mill that's over there that I can smell in the air as it drifts my way, or the sounds of the men and machines in the scrap metal yard at the bottom of this hill. And if you come this way and you find this scrap metal yard, you'll know you're in the right place. Because I'm here to tell you about this road, the old spiral highway. This is uh, quite a road. I came down it last night, but I didn't really get a chance to film it properly. The lighting conditions weren't the best, so I thought I would come back up here this morning and ride the old spiral highway once again. That sounds kind of weird. If a grown man asks you if you want to ride the old spiral highway, you should probably tell him to go away and leave you alone. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to ride this highway together. This is a, a twisting and turning storybook road, a fabled road in the world of motorcycling. And so I feel like I'm ready for this challenge. I'm up for it. So let's proceed now and ride the old spiral highway. Yeah, this road is pretty fantastic, isn't it? So many curves and such a, a short stretch. I think it's about seven miles long. Dozens and dozens of these sweeping curves and it looks like it's been uh, resurfaced not too long ago. So nice, smooth asphalt.
The guardrail situation is a little sketchy in spots. There, there don't seem to be guardrails in a lot of places, just these old posts. My God, what a hell of a way to start this morning. Hop on the bike and first thing you enter the spiral. What a spiral this is, it really is a spiral. It's just one curve after another. Smooth, brand new, fresh asphalt, amazing views. I worked up a sweat on that one. I worked up a real sweat just climbing this hill. I'm almost to the top now. And when I get to the top in a very few short moments, I'll be on Highway 95 and I'm gonna I'm gonna head south, down into Idaho from here. Sitting up here at this vantage point, I can count no less than 10 different distinct sections of this road, patches of pavement amidst the fields of green and the suburban landscape down below, 10 different stretches of this road as it curves and undulates up the side of this hill overlooking the Snake River. I love your stuff. You're, You're on my video. Oh, am I? You know itchy boots? Well, I don't. Know her. I know of her. Oh, I gotta get a selfie. Absolutely. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> so I found these guys up here riding uh, the old Spiral Highway. That's what this is called. You guys know this road. Yeah. You're from around here. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. When I was a little kid, we came down in a car with my dad and they asked to pull up this awesome little bike. Right on you guys. Thank, right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, thanks. I was just thinking that maybe my helmet has a lot of bugs on it. And it doesn't look so good when you see those shots of me riding down the road and maybe it doesn't look so polished and professional like everything else that I'm doing so I'm gonna clean that off right now. I always carry one of these in my tank bag. I find it very helpful to do this every so often. It's a lot of organic material on there. But that'll help with things as I go down the road and carry on with this catastrophe that's called a, a YouTube series. Here's the other thing that's been going on is my seat. It was torn when I started this journey and I've been replacing this tape over it every so often and now the stuffing is starting to come out of it as well but that's okay I have a, a cure for that. I've got this Gorilla Tape and this little scissors. I'm going to patch it up again. There we go. It's just like new. Nobody will ever notice this little bit of imperfection and I can carry on looking like the perfect, clean, professional that I am. I'm on this uh, scale right now, and in case you're wondering, it says my bike weighs 880 pounds. So that's me, the bike, everything I'm carrying, 880 pounds. standing in a wheat field. I'm not sure why, but it seemed like the thing to do. I wanted to experience this wheat field in a different way, other than passively as an observer driving down the highway. So I decided to go walk in this wheat field and it's kind of peaceful. I have to admit, I really like the way the wheat sounds as it blows in the wind and the undulations of the air rippling across its surface. Van Gogh did a lot with wheat. Why can't I? I don't know how these wheat farmers avoid going insane with so much beauty around them. Do they ever just stop their tractors and gaze in awe at their wheat fields? 
I know I would. Stopped here on the side of the road outside of Ferdinand, Idaho, because I wanted to show you something. It's a doghouse, but I guarantee you, you've never seen a doghouse like this one. I've come down here to the banks of the Salmon River. It was a long descent, steep, sixth gear all the way, baby. And it got hot down here in Hell's Canyon, where I'm at now, the Salmon River. Isn't she beautiful? canopy of green next to the water's edge, mountains painted in hues of brown, and a road with a yellow line. I dropped down into Hell's Canyon and it got hot, almost triple digits now. Following the course of the Salmon River, I'm heading upstream, tempted to park the bike and jump into the river, but I can't do that. At least I feel I can't at this moment because I have to make time, I have to make tracks, I have to keep the machine moving down the road. Every day when I look at the miles I have to accomplish to get home, they don't seem to add up. I kind of have to force myself to keep moving, to make some miles. I know Nevada will go pretty quick. Well, this is pretty good, my friends. I found a very beautiful place to camp tonight, provided by the city of Donnelly, south of McCall here in Idaho. And I just saw a sign that said campground that way. I went a few miles down the road and here I am. And it's great because I went to the state park in McCall, Ponderosa State Park, big giant campground, completely full. Even if there was one spot left to me, I wouldn't want to take it with that many people. And look at this. This is paradise. How beautiful is this? This lake and all these green grasses growing right next to the water's edge. And the sun is going to go down pretty quickly, so I'm going to get my campsite all set up. But this is going to be a really nice place to camp. And I've got dinner. It's Nothing too fancy tonight. I'm going to do a little charcuterie, charcuterie board, sort of, and uh, maybe make a salad out of some cucumbers and tomatoes. And I have some wine. I'm looking forward to having a glass of wine. Well, here we are, you and I. We have reached some sort of campsite nirvana. The gods of camping life have bestowed us with all that we need. Now I'm over here in another campsite looking to see what kind of wood I might be able to scavenge. That's one of my tips is that if you didn't bring your own campfire wood, just go look around in the other campsites. And you might be able to find some logs and sticks and things like that. And this will be a good opportunity to use the bushcraft saw. It lives here in this fancy looking beautifully put together hanging bag of bushcraft goodies. All of the things uh, adventure motorcyclist needs on the road. And this is what we're looking for right here. This would be the tool. It's the friendly Swede. Well, made it through another day. Today was a good day. Waking up in the, the nice hotel, having breakfast there, and then hitting the road, riding up the old spiral highway, and then continuing further, having to fix my seat before stopping to enjoy the pleasure of exploring one of the last remaining big wheat fields on this journey, the last one that I'll stand in, and then coming further down into Idaho and riding along the Salmon River descending the, the giant hill down to Hell's Canyon where things heated up, riding along the banks of the Salmon River for miles through riggings, and then finding this place. Perfect campsite. Really hope that you guys have enjoyed this episode. 
and you will continue to follow me as I make my way back home to southern Arizona. I'm going to have to step on the gas pretty soon because the dillying and the dallying has cost me a little bit of time. Take care, you guys. I'm going to enjoy my charcuterie here and my box of wine. <laughs>